My son Ellie has mastered the art of using a camera from the animal's perspective to really enhance his videos. Even Jacob has tried to do different camera angles to capture tasks that he's doing around the farm. Uh, my friend Daniel at Arms Family Homestead is doing a lot of neat things with a tripod and setting the camera up to capture different moments. Don't lay down on me. Big step. Big step. Hey. I'm starting to try to learn how to be a little more creative in my videos to, you know, give you a better experience. Y'all look at some of the things that they've done and then watch some of my ultimate fails as I'm trying to... One thing, Jake better be home to unload this. Whatever it takes to give you a better video experience. Y'all should applaud my efforts. It's not easy for old dogs to learn new tricks. Y'all enjoy the video and bear with me, okay? something that we should have done a long time ago. I got these locks and these chains and I'm going to put these on the three gates that uh, surround this front pasture to hopefully deter people from coming inside the pastures to love on our babies. Y'all bear with me a moment when I drive over there. These goats have come running like I'm going to feed them or something. I didn't bring any food and you said, oh my goodness, look at this. She screamed. She screamed and here they all come running. <laughs> that is the funniest thing. Guys, I didn't bring any snacks. I didn't bring any snacks. All I, look, Shirley has a mouthful of hay. Shirley was eating hay. <laughs> Shirley didn't want to drop her hay. Guys, I didn't bring you any snacks. I'm so sorry. I brought no snacks, uh, so what I've come out to do, you all know that um, we've had a little scare as of recent with the, the whole Brady thing. And I tell you what, we thought we had lost them, y'all. We thought we had lost them. And so I bought these locks and chains, and I'm gonna wrap it around this uh, gate here and lock it. It's a combination lock, so I got three of them, and they all have the same combo. Uh, that combo is Beep! I'm kidding. No, I bought three locks, and I have that combo. And, uh, guys, look how dumb I am. Look how dumb I am. I don't want to turn the lock towards you because of the fact that uh, it shows my combination. Y'all watch my chain. The chain is not there. Can you see that? And it will not close. Look at that. Look, it won't close and lock. Ugh! The struggle, y'all, the struggle is real. Darn it, Lester. Well, I guess I will not be putting a lock and chain on these today. I do have the locks. And I bought the chain, but wrong size chain. I have to upgrade to a bigger chain, which is probably better anyway, because these over here, people can cut these. You know what the problem I ordered on Amazon, and I probably should have went to the store to buy it. But uh, you know the drama that I have going inside of a store. But, uh, well, that, you know what? So this over here might be a good lesson to all of those who say, I'm just going to Amazon shop from now on because Lester's right. Stores stress me out. This is one problem that you have when you shop on Amazon. You don't know exactly what you're getting. And so the lock that I bought and the chain, the uh, bolt here is too thick to go through the holes of the chain. If I had actually gone to the store, I could have kind of like tested them out right there on the aisle and uh, would have got it right. 
So now I pretty much wasted the money on these because by the time I take and rebox and ship it all the way back, it's gonna probably cost more than the chain is even worth. The locks are still good. I'll just have to go buy me three smaller, no, three larger bits of chain. Boy, Carl sure is interested in all of this. All right, well, I'm back. It's a different day, but I found me what I hope is gonna be a thicker chain. Now, when I went and bought this, I just went to the, the um, auto zone up the road. And I got this here because today is Sunday and I don't want any of those kids coming over into that pasture, or at least if they do, they cannot walk into the pasture. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I hope that y'all, I hope that you guys appreciate the things that I try to do for y'all with one hand. You know what? A lot, of, a lot of video creators have unique ways of making videos. And uh, carrying around a tripod is one really neat thing. Yeah! There we go. All right. Now we're looking pretty good, folks. Now we're looking good. All right. So the problem with this chain is that it's not... It's not really... Well, it's... Look what it's made for. It's made to connect, it's a safety chain to connect a trailer to your truck in case for some reason the latching system should fail. So I have to go out here, it's pretty long, and I have to go out here and cut it into three pieces. That's gonna require what we call bolt cutters. And this is not going to be easy, and I cannot, there's no way I can do this with one hand. All right, so I have three pairs of bolt cutters. I have a little small pair, a mid-sized pair, and I have a large pair. Now, obvious for, obviously, for cutting things thick like this chain here, you want to use the one with the, the most leverage. It's all about leverage here, guys, and we're taking the large pair of bolt cutters. Now, I'm going to set this chain up so you can all watch how I do this. I'm going to hang it right here, maybe. And you can watch. I'm going to get me a length about that long. If I cut this into thirds, I want to put this chain into thirds. You know what I mean by that? Into three equal pieces. So that's where I'll make my cuts right there. So you take these bolt cutters here and you put them right where you want to cut. Now this requires some serious strength. Ah, you hear that pop? That would be the chain. And so... Uh, this is called farm strong, everybody. Yabba dabba. All right, so look what I've done here. I cut that chain. Isn't this kind of scary, though, to know that if anyone ever wants to get into anything you have chained up, they can just cut it? And it wasn't that that hard. But uh, I don't think any of the kids at church are going to be carrying around bolt cutters. And that's going to look pretty obvious when he's out of their truck or their car with bolt cutters. There's one piece. Now we're gonna take and cut this next piece all while you're able to watch. Yeah, I was saying how creative, creative, how awesome it is to see these video creators that I watch. Oh my God, have mercy on my soul. Uh, how they find unique ways to give you video because people are finding out that the more creative you can be in your video creation, ay, holy moly. Yeah, the more creative you can be in your video creation, the more entertaining your videos are going to be. There we go. All right, folks, now I, what I have is three equal pieces. And for people who make a living off video creating, you have to find a way to engage and entertain your audience. And everyone can say, I made one a little bit short. Whoopsie. I didn't quite measure that one out right. Anybody can say, uh, I just admit that I'm here for entertainment purposes only. Because uh, in reality, I know that a lot of folks watch some videos to learn. But I think that even though you may be learning, aren't, aren't we really here for entertainment? Because I don't think anybody would watch a particular channel all day, every day, 
just to learn new things. Seriously. And it doesn't matter what kind of channel you watch. Uh, I think that you're entertained. I mean, let's take an example. How about that couple, that guy and girl, who really cute couple, and they do those homes. They buy like uh, rundown homes, and they just completely like drum, like make them new. So of course, in their videos, it's not videos. I think they're on a TV channel. I know that you can see the work that she does on the interior and you see what he does on the exterior and how they come together on at some points and they do things together. And why do you watch that? You don't watch that so that you can go to the store and re do, redo your home. You don't watch that for that reason. Even though it's full of do-it-yourself kind of ideas, that's not why any of us watch that. We watch it for multiple other kinds of reasons. We like to be entertained by the couple by their, because they're cute and they're funny. And uh, we like to see the transformation of things. We like to see how they did it, even though we're not watching that channel to learn. And so I, I kind of told Jamie, I says, uh, I'm never going to make my channel about learning. I'm not. So you can watch me do things. You just now saw how I have three different pairs of bolt cutters and the more leverage, the easier the cut, even though that was di very difficult. But I could have never done that, no matter how farm strong you might be with that small pair of bolt cutters. You could have never done that. Or right, I'm gonna drive down now and put this lock and latch on the gate before the church kids get here and the uh, pasture fills up with kids. It's gonna look kind of weird if I'm over there putting a lock on the gate in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> That's gonna look kind of weird. All right, let's go. Carl needs to give his approval first. That's all I'm doing there, Carl. I'm cutting some chains. All right, it's all for a good cause, Carl, is to keep you safe and keep these babies safe. So what I've done this morning is I've come by and I've closed the gate over here so that Carl and all the baby babies, I don't mind the donkeys, but all of the baby babies are kept here inside this, the small little barn pasture. And uh, I'm gonna go do this little job. And I'm also gonna keep Carl here for the whole day because not the entire day, but while they're having church. Guys, I'll explain more about this when we get over there. But listen, these little kids come and they just, they are so entertained by all these littles and I've never minded the kids coming by to pet the goats and to feed them snacks. But I cannot let that happen with Carl because Carl does this kind of stuff over here. He's very protective. He doesn't understand that they're just kids and they just wanna love the babies. So I will leave Carl here the entire day Today, I'm letting the donkeys out. So if the kids want to come by and play and love on the donkeys, that's one thing. But they're not going to come by and uh, mess with the littles, these babies, because Carl doesn't allow it. All right. So I've beaten almost everybody here to church. There is one car. But one car is fine. Here's the gate we're going to work on right there. All right, so I just feel like this comes across as being so mean. And I'm not trying to be mean. I really, no one's trying to be mean. Uh-oh. All right, look at there. All right, so we put us a lock around this thing and it's a combination lock, so I know the code and so all is good. So now having a lock on the fence or on the gate along with plenty of signs and we got signs marked all along here. There should be no way anyone should be leaving these gates open. I made this shot tight uh, and the chain link short, so there's no way that's as much as anyone could ever push that thing open and there's no way any of our animals could get out with that chain and lock being there. And so now if for some reason, one of those kids should kick this ball over, um, they'll have to climb the fence to get in there. And I, I mean, you can't make them not to climb it. You, you can tell the adults of the church don't let them, but you know what, these middle school and high school age kids, they keep doing whatever they wanna do. You can't quite tell them no, which is a shame, but at least I'm not gonna be liable. Luster's not going to be liable because if something was to happen to him, 
I have plenty of signs and oh, and don't worry, I know what y'all are gonna say, but Lester, a lot of those kids don't speak English. Dang it. Uh, no, they don't, but get, look what I've done. I've bought signs in English and Spanish. And so here's, there's one deterrent right there. That's one deterrent right there. And I have those signs up and down this fence. Now I'll tell y'all something else too. Let me get my side by side. There's Carl way, way over there in the other pasture. Let me get my side by side. I'll tell y'all one last thing. I'm going to leave out of this spot before the church kids start coming over here. Let me try that one more time. Oh, it's going to be a tough shot to make. So get, let me give you kind of a layout of where everything's at here. So this is actually our property. There's a little family cemetery that belongs to us. It's not part of the church. That's Morrow. And only my two sets of grandparents were buried here. But I do want to say that this is our property and extends all the way across. You know, you already know this. But whenever I came by, when Jamie and I came by and redid all this fencing after Hurricane Harvey, the church had already begun to open itself up and there were a lot of kids and all they had access to was as far as playing their games and volleyball and other stuff was all around the church. So they were playing in the parking lot. They were kind of shooting basketball and stuff around the cars. And so I felt bad for them. And so we thought we would do a good thing and we did not give this. This is still Morrow property. It belongs to us. But I did use cut my fence a little bit short. What I did was come around the edge here with my fence Instead of coming straight down around the cemetery, I went ahead and left this, left this spot open. And I told the pastor that I don't mind if the kids use this little spot to play their soccer. This way they're not sitting there kicking balls around the church and things going on the road. And everything has been great. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's all been good for the most part. Uh, even when we had the littles up here, as far as the little goats, you know, and whatnot, Ringo was really the only threat. And so if the kids kicked the ball over and had to jump over... The only thing they had to look out for was Ringo. <laughs> he was the only thing they had to be aware of is Ringo. But now with Carl, we know that Carl, even though he's amazing with the littles, as far as keeping them safe, he's not safe for people to be around. And so that has changed the entire dynamic of how safe I feel with these kids being here. And Carl's not going to jump out, but I don't want these kids coming in. And so I don't want to let them... See, there's an access to a gate that can leave open accidentally. I don't want people at night driving by here taking a peek at the animals and know they can just walk right in. And so, like I said, if they want to get in, they'll have to climb over. We're going to put a chain and lock on this gate right here. And I have a third one for this gate over here. And that way, there's no way anyone can get into these pastures without having to climb over. And that right there changes everything as far as your liability. Let me say that again, guys. Let me say that one more time, because we trust me, we've checked. If you were to leave a gate open, even accidentally, or if someone claims the gate was left open, which we would never do, but if it does happen and some kid wanders into your property and they get hurt, guess what? You're liable, which is, <laughs> which is BS to me, but hey, that's the way the law reads, okay? It's ridiculous. But if that same child has to climb over so, so if there's a, if there is a natural deterrent, it doesn't have to be, a, I'm sorry, if there's, if there's a deterrent in place is what the law reads. If there's a deterrent in place and it doesn't have to be a fence, it could be a tree line, a thick tree line. It could be a ditch, but if that person, and, 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 and if it's smart, I forgot all the, I forgot all the fine wording, but if that person, if it's clearly marked and if that person has to go through some kind of deterrent then all of a sudden now you're released from liability does that make any sense to y'all whatsoever so yeah so now if for some reason one of these kids were to climb over into my pasture 
even though it says, <laughs> no, do not enter, do not enter, do not enter, no pase, no pase, or whatever the language may be, and they still come over, and one of them was to get hurt, guess what? That's on them. Now, do we want that? Of course not. But do we have to protect ourselves? Yes, we do. We have to protect ourselves because these babies deserve better than having a bunch of frivolous lawsuits thrown at them. And as you already know, we've, we've experienced such frivolous lawsuit a couple of years ago. I do not want to retell that story, but we got out of it. We were able to beat it, but it cost us, sheesh, almost $10,000. So, but it, but that saved us probably a hundred thousand dollars. So it's ridiculous y'all. And I don't want you to have the comments consumed with lawsuits and frivolous lawsuits, unless it, you can tell a story. I love to read stories, but let's not get onto the kiddos. Let's not get onto the kiddos. Let's not get onto the parents. Let's not get on the Lester and Jamie. We should have done this a long time ago. Let's not get onto Carl. Let's not get onto Carl. But uh, look, all the babies are up there and they're like, why can't we come out, daddy? And the reason is because it's a church day. And so the church will have services until about noon and then they will dismiss. And then at that point, some people will leave right away. But a lot of people hang around so their kids can play. And so when the Sunday school class dismisses before services, they always bring the kids over here. And so the kids come over here and they sit around under the trees. They have Kool-Aid and they eat their cookies, you know, their punch and cookies. And then uh, once they're done with that, some of the bigger kids come and play soccer. Some of the older kids go play volleyball. They have a little basketball court they shoot around on. Or sometimes they just walk around and they talk. And like I said, I do not mind them walking along here on this side of the pasture. Guys, please. Anyway, I think y'all get the idea. I'm gonna put these other two chains and locks on and then we will, hey, we're free from liability. <laughs> hey, let me show y'all something else that a lot of video creators are doing. This is so stupid. So I'm finding a piece of debris here in the pasture. I'm gonna set this on the ground and lean my camera up next to it. All right, y'all watch this. Y'all watch this. Y'all see that? And now watch, they get off, they get off. And then they come over here and do it again over on this side, watch. I know what y'all are thinking. Lester, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Y'all watch this. <laughs> oh my God, did y'all just see that? So, this is funny. I'll show you something else. Hold on. This is funny. Y'all watch this. Y'all watch this for a minute. So I'm leaning my phone up against the post. Y'all watch. Did y'all see that ultimate fail? Yeah. Y'all, video creators are ridiculous. But, it's a little trick of the trade, a trick of the trade, if you will, of how you can keep people engaged in your videos. Hi, Carl! So, what I've done, just come to the back side of the pasture. The last thing that I worry about let me go ahead and turn this off so you can hear me better. Now, there's no way to stop this, okay? There is no way to stop this, but this is my Uncle Raleigh and Aunt Joanne's driveway. Now, we have a gate over on our side of the driveway, so people cannot come up our driveway without having to have that gate open, and people don't know the code. And they're, all right, so we had deterrence. 
But now the problem is anybody can drive up this driveway. And you're saying, Lester, why are you showing them? Don't show them. Guys, people already know that. Anyone that takes the time to drive over here, trust me, and we, there have been so many people and it's so annoying. I mean, it is the most annoying thing and it's the most uncool and the most ridiculous thing ever. When people drive over here, they drive up Uncle Raleigh and Aunt Joanne's driveway and they come and they park over here. They park and they sit here, they get out of their cars, they take their cameras. And so listen to me, I, I know y'all are thinking, y'all are being mean, y'all are being greedy with them animals. You're not sharing the love. It's not about sh not wanting to share the love. It's about worrying about liability because here's a couple of reasons. Animals like Carl and those that are not used to being around people, when folks drive up, he gets anxious. He gets nervous. He goes into a defensive mode. And so how fair is it for an animal to be living his best life as a protector of all of these babies when he's constantly on a weekend, especially being harassed by people driving by and wanting to look over the fence. Some people try to feed them. People come over here and try to feed the animals. And so this is not like old McDonald's farm. It's not a petting zoo at the fair where, you know, they, where they do stuff like that. And so we've been to those kind of places and those, those are really, really neat. But this is an animal forever home, a sanctuary, a piece of, a place of peace and quiet, love and tranquility. Well, for the most part, it can get a little chaotic at times, but, um, uh, we can't just have you know strangers doing that so i don't really know how we'll ever stop this i have talked to joanne about possibly getting a big gate for the end of their driveway but i want to show you the problem with that let me drive up um let's drive around uh-oh spaghettios oh no guys we're out of gas. I gotta get home. The reason I'm swerving back and forth is to shake that gasoline around a little bit. I keep that gasoline swooshing around so we don't run all the way out. I do not want to be stranded way over here. So that's why I'm swerving. I haven't been drinking. I have not been drinking. Y'all need to know this. I have not been drinking, but I am out of fuel. I'm trying to swish it around to keep it until I get home. This is too wide of an entrance to put a gate. Almost made it, guys. I've almost made it. Almost. 